In this series, we'll go over the commander ban list and discuss all the cards on the list, why they're banned, and if they can be unbanned. Today, we're finishing up the cards that are only banned in commander, and then going to start on some cards that we've talked about in some of the series before this one. First off, we have Paradox Engine. This is a legendary artifact with a mana cost of 5. It is the ability where, whenever you cast a spell, you untap all non-land permanents you control. This card was banned in July of 2019. Why was Paradox Engine banned? There are two big issues with this card. The first is the combination of how powerful it is and the effect it has on the games when it hits the field. What would usually happen is a player would tap a lot of mana rocks to cast Engine and then follow up with another spell. This would untap all those mana rocks, letting you cast yet another spell, and so on and so on, so as long as you had spells to continue casting. There are ways to make this even more consistent, such as using cards like Isochron Scepter. This is an artifact that allows you to exile an instant or sorcery that costs 2 or less when it enters the battlefield. And you can pay 2 and tap it to cast a copy of the exiled card without paying its mana cost. With the Paradox Engine out, every time you activate Scepter, you'll get to untap it and all your other permanents, as Scepter does technically cast the copied spell. If you put a card like a Lightning Bolt under your Scepter, you can just burn all your opponents to death with this combo, winning on the spot. And while this is very powerful, the real issue here is honestly just how easy it is to make the engine way too good. As long as you have a few non-land permits you can tap for mana, you can usually just storm off and put together some kind of combo, or just get so ahead on board that it's impossible for your opponents to ever come back. The cherry on top of all of this is just how long Paradox Engine turns take to complete. Players with an engine on the field will often take turns that are 3 or 4 times as long as any other player at the table. It's very similar to the issue with Prophet of Krufix, which just made one player take over the entire game and plays way more than everyone else. This is where the second main issue that was alluded to earlier comes in. The card is colorless, meaning it can be played in literally any deck. This led to Paradox Engine being played all over the place in basically any deck that wanted to go off and extend their board state. The combination of how heavily played the card was, and how many bad games it led to, result in the card being banned from the format. What are the arguments for unbanning Paradox Engine? The argument that Engine slows down the game is a bit hard to pin down and quantify, leading a lot of people to argue that cards shouldn't be banned for this reason. In fact, there are still lots of combos and strategies you can employ in the format that have a very similar effect. What made Paradox ban worthy in the eyes of the rules committee is likely how widespread the card's usage is. Basically, every deck could play Engine, and it would make the deck better which meant that it was leading to these kinds of games a lot more often than other cards. Sure, cards like Tulane, Teller of Tales can have a similar effect on games, but this is one specific commander, rather than a format staple that as much as all four players in a pod could be playing. Another argument is a less popular one, but still worth bringing up. The card was very strong in CEDH, and the banning hurt that side of the format in some people's eyes. The Rules Committee has said that they don't consider CEDH when banning cards, at least for the most part. The Paradox Engine banning had an overall positive effect on the format, but there were certainly several pain points, so it's understandable why some people want the card back. Next up, we have Primeval Titan. This is a 6-6 giant with a mana cost of 4 and 2 green. It has Trample, meaning it can deal excess combat damage to defending player or planeswalker. Whenever it enters the battlefield or attacks, you can search your library for up to 2 land cards, put them into the battlefield, and then shuffle. This card was banned in September of 2012. And while we're here, we should also talk about a very similar card in Sylvan Primordial. This is a 6-8 avatar with a mana cost of 5 and 2 green. It has Reach, allowing it to block flying creatures, and has the ability where, when it enters the battlefield, for each opponent, you destroy target non-creature permanent and opponent controls. Then, for each permanent destroyed this way, you search your library for a forest card and put it in the battlefield tapped, then shuffle. Why were Primeval Titan and Sylvan Primordial banned? These cards were mostly banned due to how they warp the game around them. The enter the battlefield triggers on these cards are so powerful that the best thing to do when they hit the battlefield was to clone them, steal them, blink them, do basically anything with them. The cards put you so far ahead in terms of mana with their triggers that you would, after a few uses of the cards, be able to cast multiple expensive powerful spells in a single turn. This is even more important to Commander than it is in other formats, thanks to how the higher life totals and multiple opponents affect the format. We've mentioned this at several points, but Commander as a format requires far more explosive plays and cards to bring a game to a close. Getting extra mana is an effect that's really powerful and these cards are so efficient in terms of mana production that it ended up being better to do things with them instead of just doing about anything else. Thanks to the effect it's had on games, the cards were banned. What are the arguments for unbanning Primeval Titan and Sylvan Primordial? This is a case where the power creep of the format really matters. We have more powerful mana ramp now than we've ever had, and threats, removal, combos, basically everything has crept up on them. The mana off of these cards is a lot less game-winning than it used to be, Additionally, there are other cards that are probably just more powerful and do the same thing, but much worse. The best example would be Dockside Extortionist, a 2-drop that makes you a treasure for each artifact and or enchantment your opponent controls when it enters the battlefield. These are tokens that you can tap and sacrifice for one mana of any color. 
Extortionists will usually make far more than two treasures when it comes in, often upwards of five or more treasures, and this mana is usually enough to repel you into a winning position. Copying and flickering extortionists is usually just better than Titan or Primordial, so it's strange that these cards are banned while it's completely legal. So, those are all the cards that are only banned in Commander. Though there are some cards that are banned in other formats that we've talked about already. So, since we've already covered these cards so many times, we're going to go over all the rest of the banned cards in a sort of lightning round, spending just a little bit less time talking about them. First off, we have the infamous members of the Power 9, eight of which are banned in Commander. The Moxen, Mox Pearl, Mox Sapphire, Mox Jet, Mox Ruby, and Mox Emerald are all zero mana artifacts you can tap to add one mana of their respective color. These were all banned in April of 2005. Now, why were the Moxen banned? There are two major issues, the first of which is pretty interesting. You see, the Moxen were partly banned just because of how expensive they are. The Rules Committee isn't part of Wizards of the Coast, and are therefore not legally bound to pretend that the secondary market doesn't exist. This means they can openly make decisions based on things such as availability of cards. And cards like the Moxen, which can individually each go for upwards of $2,000, are on the reserved list, meaning Wizards can't reprint them without legal trouble. This obviously means that the Moxen are very scarce and hard to get a hold of, and the RC didn't want Commander to seem like a luxury format that only the extremely wealthy people could afford to play. And since the Moxen would have been kind of broken in the format, they went ahead and banned them. This does lead to the next question. Why are the Moxen too broken? We've talked about this before, but Moxen are essentially lands that don't take up a land drop. Playing a Mox instead of a land means that you're a turn ahead in terms of mana reduction for the rest of the game, leading to having a pretty huge upside over your opponents. People already talk about banning Soul Ring and Mana Crypt thanks to them basically doing the same thing. So putting more cards with that kind of impact in the game into the format would be a really bad idea. As far as arguments for unbanning the Moxen go, no one really wants them unbanned. The price on top of having an almost entirely negative impact on the format means that there's not much of a reason to let them back into the format. Next up we have Black Lotus, a zero mana artifact with ability where you can tap and sacrifice it at three mana of any one color. This was banned at the same time as the Moxen in April 2005, as were the rest of the Power 9 with the sole exception of Time Twister. Why was Black Lotus banned? The card was banned for basically all the same reasons as the Moxen, except even more so. Black Lotus is the second most expensive magic card in existence, making the availability issue even worse. It also makes way too much mana far too quickly. While it doesn't make consistent mana, the burst of mana it gives you allows you to put combos together extremely early, or ramp into even more powerful ramp spells early, or doing any number of extremely broken things. Black Lotus would lead to far more non-games on top of giving a very small subset of players a huge advantage. And similar to the Moxen, no one really wants the card unbanned. Next up, we have Time Walk. This is a sorcery the mana cost of 1 and 1 blue. It is the effect where you take an extra turn after this one. Now, why was Time Walk banned? Beyond a lack of availability, Time Walk causes two major issues. The first is the effect of the Color Pie. The Color Pie is one of the most important things in Magic, and one of the selling points of the game from a design standpoint. However, the appeal of the game goes away if one color is obviously way better than all the others, and from a competitive standpoint, it leads to a stagnant format with very low deck diversity. Time Walk is just a very unfair card, doing far too much for far too little mana. It's hard to explain why Time Walk is so good, but the best way to think about it is realizing just how low the floor is. Time Walk is, at worst, a free explore. It draws you a card and lets you play an additional land, just like Explore does, for the same amount of mana. However, it also untaps your other lands afterwards, letting you do even more on that turn. At worst, Time Walk is a better version of an already very playable card. In the best case scenario, the card can literally win you the game as an extra turn is one of the best effects in all of Magic. All of this is to say that Time Walk is one of the most broken cards Wizards has ever printed. While this is a big issue in a competitive format, in a casual format like Commander, it causes a different kind of problem. Time Walk is powerful enough that it makes playing blue noticeably better than playing the other colors. And while this effect is dampened by being a 99 card singleton format, it's still noticeable. The effect is mostly psychological. Why would you choose to play any non-blue deck when playing a blue deck gives you access to cards that are clearly just far better than any other color? Commander already has issues with color balance that Wizards is trying to hammer out. Having cards like Time Walk that are still noticeably stronger than any other card only make the discrepancies even more noticeable. All in all, Time Walk will just have a very negative impact on the format. Next up, we have Ancestral Recall. This is an instant with the mana cost of 1 blue. It is the effect where target player draws 3 cards. Why was Ancestral Recall banned? Recall's ban is basically identical to why Time Walk is banned. It's a combination of being very expensive and being way too strong, making blue far too strong of a color. Now, in Commander specifically, Recall is noticeably weaker than Time Walk is, 
as taking an extra turn scales better in the multiplayer format than drawing extra cards does. Still, this doesn't change the facts of the matter. Recall is still a very unfair card. By far the best card draw effect in the game. It would feel very unfair for blue to get access to this kind of card where every other color has to actually pay a reasonable cost to draw their cards. That seals all of the power 9 that are banned in the format. The next section of cards I'd like to quickly go over are the dexterity cards, falling star, and chaos orb. Falling Star is a sorcerer with the mana cost of 2 and 1 red with the effect where you flip it onto the playing field area from a height of at least 1 foot. It deals 3 damage to each creature it lands on, and you tap all those creatures. However, if it doesn't flip over at least once during the flip, it has no effect. Chaos Orb is an artifact with a mana cost of 2. It has the effect where you can pay 1 and tap it to flip it onto the table from a height of at least 1 foot. You destroy all non-token permanents it's touching when it lands, then destroy Chaos Orb but you can only do this if it's flipped all the way over at least once as well. These were also both banned in April 2005 along with the Power 9 cards. So why are these cards banned? They're banned for the exact same reason they're banned in every other format. They don't belong in Magic. Dexterity just isn't a skill that Magic designers want to test, as it feels really far outside the bounds of how the game normally works. Not to mention there are tons of issues caused with these cards that go beyond this. First off, there's no question of when you're allowed to move your cards around in a format with these cards. There aren't many rules about where you're allowed to place your cards on the mat or when you're allowed to move them in the Magic rulebook, outside of a few things meant only to keep communication between players smooth and effective. This means that in a format with these kinds of cards available, the most optimal way to play this is with all of your cards a full card's length away from each other. That way any dexterity card will only ever land on one of your permanents. This is extremely annoying, especially in Commander where boards get so much larger than they normally do. All of these attributes together make it so the dexterity cards don't really have a place in the format. Now, as far as unbanning these cards go, this is a bit interesting. Mainly because if there ever was a magic format where the dexterity cards were illegal, it would be in Commander. As a casual format, a lot of the worst parts of logistical issues with the cards don't come up. For example, there aren't really many tournaments for Commander and taking up too much space in tournament settings are one of the big reasons why the card needs to be banned. So, the cards do have less issues in the Commander format. However, the way that the cards clash with what many players want out of a game of Magic. While it could theoretically work, most players would probably prefer if the cards just stay banned. Alright, and that's the video. We should be wrapping up this series in the next video, so please tell us what format you'd like to see us cover next. If you have any other ideas for videos, we'd love to hear about those down in the comments too.